Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Good. Okay, how's your energy? End of the week? Up or low? Hi. Okay. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I hope uh, that's true for everyone. Okay, so let's pray and we'll, we'll get into today's class. Uh, today, again, we are continuing on the theme of faith. So that's what we are going to study about. So let's pray and uh, let's begin. Let's pray. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this wonderful day. And, uh, Lord, we pray, God, that you will deepen our understanding of your word so that, Lord, we can um, keep, oh God, strengthening ourselves and, Lord, keep moving towards the purposes that you have for us. Lord, we speak blessing upon every single student, uh, Father, uh, as they're connecting in person, online or on the e-learning platform. We speak blessings upon their lives. We speak blessings upon their family, Lord, committing each one of them into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think for the online students, it seems like uh, there is no sound. Uh, can the other students please let us know whether you can hear online students? Audio? We okay, can all hear okay. you. We are hearing you. Well. Hear. Yes, thanks, Juliana. Thanks for that. Sure. So let's uh, just get back into our lesson, chapter one, and we'll quickly recap. We uh, saw what faith is, and we saw that from one of the key scriptures in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And we said that faith uh, comes from a Greek word, the root word pistis, which means to um, uh, have confidence or credence or assurance, having an assurance that something is going to take place. And we also said that there is a connected word that also comes from the same Greek word, the um, same root word, uh, and that is believe. And believe is an act of having faith. So that much we understood. And we also said that when we say that we have faith, that scripture says there is a substance, meaning something exists in our hearts or in our spirit, which we can hold on to. Uh, and, you know, that is something we can hold on to now. We said now faith is. And tomorrow we will see a manifestation of what that uh, faith is all about. So this much we understood. And we also said that there is evidence, right? There is evidence within us. Or we could look at it as a conviction or a proof that we carry in our spirit. And one of the best ways to describe the uh, substance is title deed. We saw how in the amplified version, the uh, term used there is title deed. And today, in, in the way we, we um, do transactions, it's a transactional word. So we understood what it means, meaning today we have something that uh, gives us complete assurance of what is going to come tomorrow. So that much we uh, you know, uh, settled in our hearts. And we also said that faith is about the things that we hope for. So there's got to be something that we are hoping for. All right. And um, yeah, so those were some of the key ideas that we looked at. And we also said that faith is what connects us to God. Like in the natural world, we have different senses that connect us to God. But in the spiritual realm, faith is that sixth sense which connects us to God. Faith is essential for us to please God. And um, we also talked about how Jesus is the perfect example of faith. And we need to develop our faith to that extent because he is perfection. We saw another key uh, scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, where Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, where we read that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So meaning he is the ultimate or the epitome of our faith. So if I want to learn something about faith or grow in my own faith, 
that's where I'm going to get it from. And also, you know, we stopped when uh, we, after looking at the scripture which uh, Jesus spoke in Mark 11, 22. You know, he says, have faith in God. The NKJV version of that scripture actually translates that as have faith of God. So we were saying that not only should we have faith, but we should have God kind of faith, the kind of faith that Jesus carried, the kind of faith that God has, okay, the way God believes. You know, God's believing is amazing because if you go back to creation, he said and it happened. Okay, um, uh, we we had we had a few. Um, I I don't remember clearly whether it was 2023 or 2022, but we had a sermon series on um, creation uh, and the universe. So any of you, if you're interested, you can just go back, look up the resources on our website, and listen to that sermon. Uh, it talks about how vast the universe is. You know, creation and how God created the world and, um, you know, science, faith and science. That's the title of the series. And it's incredible when uh, when we study about the extent of the universe, you know, the expanse. It's unbelievable. The measurements that man has been able to come up with can only measure, um, you know, sort of the perceivable not even the perceivable, to some extent, we are able to measure and say, okay, stars are this far and um, uh, galaxies are this far, to some extent. But uh, in, in that sermon seri series, for the first time, I uh, realized that the undiscovered part of the universe is immense, immense, and man does not even have scales to measure it. We don't, we don't know, we, we don't have words, okay, to measure how huge the universe is. Now, Genesis chapter 1, when we begin there, we see God created, right? He said, let there be light. There was light. He, he spoke, he believed. The way God believes is, he said, and it happened. That's what Jesus was talking about in Mark chapter 11. He said, if you can believe in your heart, and if you don't doubt, and if you speak, if you say it to something, right, it'll be done for you. It'll be done for you. Speak to the mountain. It'll be uprooted. It'll be cast into the sea. That's how God believes. Whatever he says, it happens, right? He created the universe. Can you imagine the huge universe? That's the way God believes, and that's the way God uh acts on his faith. So what we are saying, Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Okay. If you don't remember anything from this course, don't forget Mark 11, 22. Jesus said, have faith in God. Okay. This morning, a question to ask all of us, do we have faith in God? Okay, do I have faith in God? And as we've been saying, have the faith of God. How God believed. God kind of faith. That's how God believed and everything happened. Right? So God is calling us to believe like that. Believe the way God believes. Amen? And that's what we are trying to learn here. How to believe the way God believes. Um, and, you know, we also stated last time that faith is about a relationship because Abraham, a, a man whom God, uh, whose faith was credited to him as righteousness, he was a friend of God. So God called him a friend. So there was a relationship. It was not just about believing and getting something done and accomplishing something in life. Uh, there's more to it. There's more to it. And therefore, Faith is for living life itself. Faith is not just, you know, oh, okay, I need faith for ministry. I need faith for my career. I need faith to do this and that and then forget about faith. It doesn't work like that. Faith is applicable in our relationship with God. Okay, so uh, we've already established without faith, 
it is impossible to please god how can you have a good friendship how can you have a good um, you know relationship without faith it can't happen so faith is essential and faith is in the relationship it's not a formula that god tells okay believers you just have faith as a formula right so all of these aspects we have understood now we are going to go further from there and in uh, i'm trying to go with the notes so that you know we can go systematically and understand uh, and please feel free you can interject at any time and ask any questions that you may have so the next thing that we are saying is faith is of the heart okay faith is of the heart what does it mean there is a scripture in romans 10:10 10, 10, talking about um salvation it says for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so how do we get saved how do we get born again jesus said john 3 3 you cannot enter the kingdom of god unless you are born again but how to be born again we believe with our hearts we confess with our mouth that jesus is lord and that is how we are born again so there are two things there one is the believing in the heart second is the confessing or the acknowledging with our mouth so notice there where does the believing happen the heart right interesting why it says believe in the heart why can't i believe in my mind why should i believe with my heart okay but that's how believing works believing happens in the heart so how do we grasp that basically what it means is see the mind may still have questions unanswered questions doubts confusions anxieties and we are thinking how can it happen how can it happen you know like we set the example joshua walking around the walls of jericho how can they fall down you know what is the science behind it what is the physics behind it how can they fall down this is all in the mind but where is faith faith is in the heart where heart is saying it's going to happen i don't know how it's going to happen but it's going to happen so faith is of the heart there can be times when our mind is still not settled right and there are uh, there are there are matters which are unresolved in our minds and yet there can be faith in the heart we can believe in our hearts amen so that's how believing works faith is of the heart and um, god calls us to have faith at all times you see second corinthians 5 7 it says we walk by faith and not by sight so again it just tells us that it's not about the external senses it's not about you know what i can see today and um, based on that i decide whether or not god is going to do this promise in my life i decide on the basis of faith of the heart so uh, we've got to live by faith not by sight not by what i see so the mind can keep bringing up things that we can see right or the natural world uh, is communicating to us the mind is constantly telling us those things but where is the heart focused the heart is focused on the word the heart is focused on the promise of god and that's why you know the scripture says we've got to walk by faith and not by sight if we walk by sight what will happen sorry did you say something i i couldn't hear you destruction confusion 
Yeah, okay. There can be confusion if you walk by sight. True? Okay, we can't see the spiritual realm. Yeah, we have nothing to live for, meaning God has a purpose, and then we are not living for that purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone, any any example of someone who who acted on the basis of sight compared to faith? Anyone like that in the Bible? Okay, it makes us fearful. True, true. Huh? Lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I think there was provision for that. God didn't stop him. Huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Who acted on sight as opposed to faith. So that was my question. Correct. So Lot saw a, a you know, flourishing piece of land and he opted for that. Uh, but when we look at somebody who acted by sight, and not by faith, uh, some of the examples could be uh, Sarah, you know, because nothing's happening. Where's the promise? You know, so she made a decision for her family and, you know, for her husband. And similarly, if you look at um, uh, Peter, right? Peter, God, Jesus says, come, walk on the water. He started. He started. Amazing. Jesus walked on water. Peter walked on water. There's nobody else in scripture that you see walking on the water. He started, right? By faith. What happened later? Sight. For a moment, he was like, what's happening? You know, am I walking on water? And you know, there's a storm and everything else. And he starts going by sight. He's not believing anymore. So then what happens? He starts sinking. Right? So for us to keep walking with God, you walk by Faith. Imagine that day if Peter walked only by faith and not by sight. We may have had an extension to what we read. But Peter started by faith, switched to sight. But thank God for the mercy and the grace of God. Jesus said, okay, come, I'll, I'll get you out of this problem. So walk by faith. Start with faith, finish with faith. That's how it works. And faith is of the heart. There can be confusions in the mind. Don't worry about that. We don't have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. How, how is God going to do? We don't know. Sometimes maybe we'll have to admit that and say, I'm sorry, I don't know. Right? But in the heart, we know. We're saying, I can't explain it, but God will do it. That is faith. Faith is of the heart. Faith is not, um, you know, of... Uh, uh, okay, anyway, uh, I won't make that statement. Let's move forward. Uh, next says, God calls us to live by faith. So everything that we do, we must live by faith. This life that we now have, you know, Paul said that I no longer live. It's Christ who lives in me. Uh, and I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. And that is the example that Apostle Paul left for us. The life that Paul is saying that he lived after he was born again, it was not for himself. But it was a life by faith for what God called him to do. So the same thing holds true for all of us. This life that we have, we're living it for God. How should we live it for God? By faith. By faith. That's the only way to live this life. Without faith, we can't. It's impossible. You can't please God. And... With faith, we can keep walking with God. And in fact, the same Apostle Paul, you know, in Romans chapter 14 and uh, verse 23, he says, for whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is not from faith is sin. 
so nothing in our lives should be faithless anything we do it's got to be done through faith we've already said earlier that we must live by faith so romans 1:17 that's the scripture that tells us that the just shall live by faith so this life as a born again believer is a life of faith that we need so everything that we do okay i'm having my food i do it by faith i bless it sanctify it in the name of jesus i declare over it thank you god this gives strength to my body it brings healing um to every part of of my body uh, and uh, it it uh, gives me wholeness uh, I, in jesus name right faith i'm coming to bible college come by faith say okay i'm going to learn something new there's going to be a new revelation for me i have all these questions god is going to speak to me what is that faith right if there's no faith we can't please god and the bible says the just shall live by faith meaning as a just person i am disobeying if i'm not living by faith and what did paul say romans 14:23 whatever is not of faith is sin so i can do a so called spiritual thing without faith and you know going by what paul is saying it's sin if there is no faith like let's say you know i i'm trying to lead worship i'm trying to serve the lord do some ministry something i'm i'm doing something i'm praying for someone but without faith i don't have faith in god or you know i'm not employing faith if i'm doing that with you know that kind of an attitude where i'm saying okay i actually don't believe that god is going to do anything but i'm doing it anyway right it's sin whatever is done without faith is sin so in all that we do romans 117 anything anything that we are doing do it by faith the just shall live by faith okay have faith in god mark 1122 and live by faith that's what god is calling us to do we need to live by faith for some of us uh, believers unfortunately faith becomes a matter of sunday service to sunday service or you know wednesday bible study to wednesday bible study all other days we forget we are only reminded we get full recharged ah okay i am supposed to live by faith and then the next day forget about it but at all times what does living mean living means all the time we are living breathing we are alive every day every moment live by faith meaning it we should never disconnect never disconnect from faith whatever we think whatever we uh, speak whatever we do learn to do it by faith and then there will be a blessing the step that you've taken when it's taken by faith it's a pleasing step to god okay so the just shall live by faith now let's talk a little bit more about faith no we're talking about uh, how important faith is and what a blessing faith is now how do i get it how do i get it because we are saying we must be full of faith where can i get it well the scripture tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so faith comes when we spend time in god's word see we always uh, use a raw material to get something right especially like if you go to uh, your chemistry class they'll tell you okay you have to use this substance and that substance then you will get the third substance if you don't have those original substances you cannot manufacture uh, some other product that you are looking at you can't do it any other way you've got to use those two compounds or you know whatever substances to get your third compound now coming to faith 
can I just manufacture faith somehow? Somehow, let faith come. I'll get faith. It will never work like that. Never. There are two sources from where we can get faith. One is the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What about no word of God? No faith. Okay, so if there is word in my heart, there will be faith. If there is no word, there will be no faith. It's as simple as that. So if I want to grow in my faith, I need to be spending time in scripture, continually uh, reading scripture. Joshua, God spoke to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 from verses you know 7 through 9. It's a beautiful promise. You know, Joshua was um, the successor to Moses and he had a great task ahead of him. And it was really scary. You know, when you've seen a leader lead the people uh, with, with such greatness uh, and you're kind of stepping into their shoes, uh, you would be fearful. Can I even do that? Right. But at that point, God was encouraging Joshua and he was telling him, you be strong and be very courageous. And that passage says that this is how you will make your way successful. What is that way to make himself successful? God gives him the key to success. And you know what that key is? Meditate in the word day and night, day and night. Okay, so God was telling Joshua, you need the word in your heart, like stick it everywhere, stick it on the doorpost, everywhere, wherever you see the word and you speak the word, you meditate in the word, meaning get the word into you, Joshua, don't worry about Moses. Okay, Moses did his work, you're going to do also. How are you going to be successful? You want the key to success? Meditate on the word. When the word goes in, faith begins to rise, right? So how to get faith? There is no other way. The word of God. The more time we spend in the word of God, faith will increase. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so God told Joshua that day, you want to be successful? This is how. And today, God speaking to our hearts and saying, whatever it is I've called you to do, you want to be successful? Spend time in the word. Meditate on the word day and night. Right? Keep it in front of you. Get it inside of you. Speak it out. Obey it. Live the word. That's the way to become successful. Okay, so faith will come by spending time in the word of God. But apart from the word, God can also speak by his Holy Spirit and faith can come into our spirit. So I remember this was my first year of college and, um, you know, compared to school, you get into college, the systems are new, the examination system is very different. And so I was, I was really scared. I was so scared. By the time the final exams came, uh, I thought, I don't think I'm Ma'am, your audio is muted. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Uh, I hope it wasn't muted for very Ma'am, again muted. Okay, are you able to hear me now?
Great. So anyway, so what I was saying is, uh, I kind of, um, when I was spending time with God, I got that um, word where Jesus says to the disciples, I will meet you on the other side. You, you remember that? He says, I will meet you on the other side. So I was so fearful. I'm not going to get to the other side. But when I got that word from God, I will meet you on the other side. I had that assurance. I was like, OK, God, that means you know, I'm going to clear my subjects. I'm going to pass. Uh, no matter what anyone says, I'll be on the other side. So every day I to tell myself, this is a word that I got from God. I will be on the other side. I will be on the other side. And so that was my first year exam experience and um, anyway it's a long story and uh, I did quite fine like I was quite surprised that you know I made it to the other side but the point I'm trying to say is there are times when God can put a word in our hearts and say uh, that this is going to happen you know Paul had an experience like that uh, towards the end of the book of Acts he was in a shipwreck Okay. And before the ship wrecked, God gave him a word and said, don't worry for the lives of those who are on the ship. None of you will perish. He got a word from God. So there are times when God will speak by the Holy Spirit into our spirits. Even that will infuse faith into our spirit. So hold on. Hold on to those words. When God speaks a word, in your situation and says, this is what I'm promising you. You know, you'll be fine as far as this is concerned, that is concerned. You know, this matter in your home is concerned or your back home in your church is concerned. Hold on to those words. God is speaking, right? So if God is saying, God will do it. And so by the word and by the work of the Holy Spirit, faith starts to rise in our hearts. So that's how faith comes and we must get that faith what is faith based on what is the foundation for our faith you know in the last class we said that faith is not mental gymnastics okay by that we mean uh, just because we are saying something just because we are believing something right the the walls here are white now if i start saying no they are black they're black, they're black, they're black. They should turn black. Okay, what is that? It's, it's, it's literally like a mental gymnastics where I'm trying to convince myself to believe in something that is not true, that may not happen. Why should it even happen? But the kind of faith and believing that we are talking about is based on what God speaks. So when God speaks something that is true, that is real, that is, um, you know, so that is correct, we can hold on to it. Faith can emerge from the word of God. But if there is no word of God, then what we are saying is made up or uh, we are terming as mental gymnastics. So we don't have to uh, struggle like that. I know that there are many teachings out there in the world today uh, where people motivate us. If you just believe, it can happen. But that's not biblical faith. Biblical faith is far from that. That's not what it is. Biblical faith is based on the word of God. If there is no word, there cannot be any faith. Okay. So let's take the example of a centurion in Matthew chapter 8. Uh, his servant was sick and uh, you know he, he comes up to Jesus to heal his servant. And what happens? Matthew chapter 8 verses 8 and verse 10. It's there in our notes. Um, you know, he comes to Jesus and says, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And in verse 10, um, Jesus, you know, is marveling. So what happened? When Jesus said that, in that very moment, the servant was healed. And Jesus was amazed by the faith of the centurion. So in verse 10, Jesus is saying, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. 
not even in Israel. So what exactly was the response of the centurion? Whatever Jesus said, immediately he believed it. He believed it 100%. In fact, Jesus could have gone to the centurion's house to heal the servant. But centurion says, no, Lord, only say a word and my servant will be healed. And so when Jesus pronounces that word of healing on the servant, immediately, that very hour, servant is healed. Why? Because the centurion believed in the word. When God is saying something, that's the origin of faith. When God says something from his heart, from his mind, right? The word of God has come. Our faith will be anchored on that word. So is our faith weak? Is our faith foundationless? Is our faith you know, make believe, is it just a, you know, mind over matter, mental ascent, whatever you want to call it. No, it's not. It's got deep foundations. What is that foundation? The word of God. God has said, therefore I believe. And so it manifests. Not because we make up something. When we make up something, God is not responsible. To make it happen okay but when he speaks that word carries authority and that's the example of the centurion you see the centurion was a leader to a hundred soldiers so when someone is in that position he knows what authority means you know when he tells them okay everyone line up everyone go here they go so as a centurion he understood the authority of words that he carried. And that's why he told Jesus, Lord, you just say a word. Meaning that word carries authority. One word. You just say one word. Enough. Enough. And when Jesus said that word, that was the foundation. He just held on to that word. If God said it, it has to happen. From that point, he was like, okay. And the miracle actually took place. The healing actually took place. So what is the basis for our faith? We don't have an empty basis. It's not empty. There is a foundation. And that is the word of God. When the word is there and we believe the word, miracles happen. When there is no word and we're trying to believe something, nothing happens. Right? But the word is the basis and look at this so Jesus in verse 10 he says I have not found such great faith not even in Israel so what was Jesus looking for seems like he was looking isn't it I've not found meaning he was searching can I find faith somewhere can I find faith and the way the centurion understood authority of the word of God, Jesus was amazed. It's a compliment. Imagine if Jesus were to tell us that, I've never found such faith. Wow. Wow. What faith you're carrying. I, I've not seen this kind of faith, you know, anywhere in Bangalore, anywhere in India. How would you feel? You'd be like amazed. But that's how he spoke to the centurion and, and said, you believed in my word. I have not seen this kind of faith anywhere, even in Israel. So there was a basis for faith. It was not empty. It is the very word of God. Now, continuing to learn about faith, do we know that faith can grow okay faith can grow so there are two scriptures in our notes here the first one in romans 12 3 states that god has given us a measure of faith 
God has given us a measure of faith. Okay? And 2 Thessalonians 1 3, when Paul talks to the Thessalonians, he says, Your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. All right. So uh, anyone here, you know, if you've had this childhood experience when the parents want to teach the kids about um, uh, saving money, okay? So they have these uh, small little boxes or uh, piggy bank, yeah, piggy bank. And they tell you, okay, let's uh, learn to save money and put some money into it, you know, maybe a couple of coins. And uh, that's how you start as a measure of money little bit of money that's coming uh, with that money you can do stuff right so if you, even if you have a few coins maybe a kid can go buy some sweets and eat it so there's something you can get out of those coins now can that money grow in the piggy bank of course if you put money, it'll grow, right? If you're increasing it in some way, uh, it'll grow. Now, if, if you're not putting any effort into collecting money and putting into it, it's not going to grow. So it began with a few coins, but let's hope the child is you know, putting in more coins, more coins towards the end of the year. There are lots of coins. And then when you get the money out, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, helpful enough to get something big. Okay, maybe buy a toy or something like that. So just for us to understand. See, God has given all of us a measure of faith. Meaning, there is an amount of faith which all of us carry. How much faith do we need to uh, move mountains? Mustard seed faith. And mustard seed is, you know, by far one of the smallest seeds. You know, we wonder why... Uh, Jesus didn't say some other seed, you know, I don't know what is the biggest seed, but thankfully he said mustard seed, little bit faith. So we all have a measure of faith. We can all be moving mountains right away because we have mustard seed, faith. But it need not be mustard seed only. It can increase so when i'm meditating in god's word when i'm hearing from god when i'm holding on to his promises what's happening it's just an analogy okay so faith is not money and uh, your heart is not a piggy bank it's i'm just trying to explain so it increases increases in our hearts faith is increasing right faith is uh, going to the next level and uh, you know suddenly we, we are looking at ourselves and thinking I was, I was believing God for other things, but how come I'm able to believe God for greater things right now? Because our faith has increased. It went from the little bit or the measure of faith that you and I carried to what we have right now. Imagine, you know, we're going to pray for someone and uh, uh, we have mustard seed faith, which is enough, right? And we command healing to that person. Uh, and they experience healing. Now, we, maybe after six months, we're praying for someone, but we've grown in the word. We've understood about what Jesus has done on the cross. We've understood about how uh, healing is a covenant blessing that is given to us. And now when we are praying, we're praying with a different level or measure of faith, hopefully, right? It has grown. It has grown. And now we are operating in greater faith. So we can all operate in greater faith and keep operating in greater and greater and greater faith. So it does not have to stop growing. Faith can keep growing. The most unfortunate thing is if our faith is the same, right? We started, we started as a believer and then we remained with the same amount of faith till now. That would be very sad. So faith can grow, faith can increase. And the way we also explain this is like, you know, anyone who works out, anyone who exercises, you know that, how do you, how do you strengthen a muscle? How do you strengthen a muscle? Yeah, exercise, right? You need to, you need to use it. 
you need to move it the way it's required to. Then it becomes stronger and stronger. Faith, how will it become stronger? Get the word in and keep walking in faith. Exercise it. You know, we talked about praying for healing. You're praying once, twice, thrice. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Your faith is increasing. You're exercising that muscle again and again and again. And what's happening to the faith muscle? It's becoming stronger and stronger. So that's how we make our faith stronger. So let me just pause here and give us some time to you know, ask questions or comment. OK, Joanne says, faith is based on the truth. Yeah, that's correct, Joanne. Can yes. we only increase our faith by the word of God? Like, On, only meaning? Like only word of God can increase our faith or there are some other ways too? Yeah, so only word of God, uh, that's the primary way. Because we've seen that scripture also, Romans 10, 17. That's the primary way. In addition to that, we said when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, like a dream, a vision, um, rhema word, from God, that can also increase our faith. As you said, exercise. Hmm. So, the word of God is only the exercise. Uh, no. So, meditating on the word is one of the things. The exercise is also to practice it. See, for example, Peter walking on water. He took one step. He's believing it, and he's acting on it. Ideally, he should have done more of that for his faith to become stronger in that matter. So it's like that. Anything God calls us to do, we've got to exercise it. Right? Act on it. Yeah? OK. Like faith can only be used for healing? No, faith can be used for many things. Faith can be used to do project work, uh, you know, study. like. Sometimes you we don't know, right, whether we're able to do it or not. And then you're given this work and you're like, oh, goodness, I don't know how to do this. How will you do? The just shall live by faith. OK, I can crack this project by faith. Do that. Write exams by faith, uh, sing by faith, learn an instrument by faith, drive by faith. OK, anyone, if you've done that, I have driving by faith even till today. So you can do many things by faith. Yeah. It, live by faith. Everything is going to require faith. Cook by faith. Okay, So faith can be part of everything that we do. That's how God wants us to live our lives. All right. So no further questions. Uh, we'll pray and we will close off for today. Would someone like to pray, please? You can use your mic. Yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Father Lord, that we have come into your presence. And thank you, Lord, that you have protected us to the morning, Lord, and you have woke us up to the morning. And I pray that, thank you for this study, Lord, the word of your, the study of your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that whatever we studied, you we apply this word into our life, Lord, and we walk by faith, Lord, as it says, and we do everything by faith, Lord. And I pray that whatever, like when we study, when we eat, when we do everything, we include your faith into that, Lord. And I pray the day as the day goes, you make us, uh, you make us understand your word more. You make us understand your study more, and you help us in every way, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I say amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much.